Hey, what's going on, Los Angeles? Welcome to the Rams Skinny here on the LA Football Network, live on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. As always, thank you all for hanging out with us, making us a part of your day. It's a beautiful day in the Southland, although, as we were talking before, Skinny, apparently some rain again this weekend. We can't escape the rain on the weekends. Love it to rain during the week when we're, you know, working inside and then give us some sunshine on the weekend, but whatever, we can't complain. Life is good. We're talking NFL draft. We've got some fun topics of discussion for today's show. First, we're going to start with uh, a little Sam Howell news that we, uh, I'm not going to say we broke, but we, we talked about or wrote about, or you wrote about on LAFBnetwork.com and, and the potential that he was going to be Matthew Stafford's backup and how we would have liked that. And then we're going to look uh, next week, the next basically 10 days, we're going to do a bunch of mock drafts and have a lot of fun. But today we want to look back over the last, what is it? Six Sneed McVay drafts and look at the best picks and the worst picks of those and uh, have some fun with that. So first and foremost, though, my co-host with the most, my man, the professional new nickname, <laughs> Profesh. Kenny <laughs> T, what's up, brother? How we doing? I'm doing great. I, I go through most of my life without having a nickname whatsoever. Rye, Rye guy. But then I land with the LAFB and I've got a handful of nicknames, some of which I, I don't necessarily want to share all of them. <laughs> but Skinny <laughs> T, Skinny T is the first nickname that I was ever given. And it was given to uh, me by uh, the Fab Five, uh, the our glorious uh, Fab Five uh, Los Angeles Football Network uh, yeah. uh, Radio Row guys. And, uh, and now I got an another one, the professional. Uh, which is which is which is even better than skinny t yeah so if we if we form you know if the fat five becomes a mafia group then you're great with the, the professional and then yeah. i can be like tiny or something <laughs> and you know we'll come up with the rest but yeah we'll be a great great mafia crew i guess great mob crew the lafb mob i don't know if that's yeah, I think, remote but <laughs> I, I think you know nicknames like over the years have become, you know, less good. Like, you know, you look back at like some, you know, our grandparents' generation, and you're like this, this is, this is Dutch, you know, why, why do you call them Dutch? I don't know. It's just, that's what we, what we call them. Yeah. <laughs> nickname. I still think my favorite, like cultural nickname is in like Latin culture. Anyone named Jesus is pretty much their nickname is Chewy. Never understood why. I've talked to many uh, Mexicans, talked to my wife, her family, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's Chewy. And I'm like, why? Like, wh where did that derive from? So if anyone out there knows, hit me up on Twitter, Ryan Dyer at LAFB, or just comment below because, yeah, everyone I've talked to is like, it's just the way it is. I, I don't really know why Jesus is Chewy, but that's a nickname that I've always been fond of. <laughs> but anyway, enough of that. Let's get into some Rams talk here. Skinny T, as that's the point of the show. Quickly got to say real quick. Sorry, I know I just teased that, but show is always brought to you by our friends at BetOnline. Head to BetOnline.ag today. Use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V. Gets you a welcome bonus, a 50% welcome bonus. So you put in 100 bucks, you get 50 free dollars to play with. Just got to use that promo code BELIEVE at BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Sam Howell. Let's talk about it, Skinny. So it came out. Well, it's you. You wrote the story. So so give us the, the details of that, and then we'll talk about and dissect what could have been here in Los Angeles. Yeah. So uh, Mike Garofalo was on Puck Sports Podcast, and he said that the Rams were in on the trade. Um, they, they were interested in Sam Howell trading for him. Now, Seattle Seahawks ended up uh, outbidding them uh, to the cost of a third round pick, the 78th overall, and a fifth round, 152nd. Um, so that's, and, and Seattle also sent off their 101st pick. So a bit of a pick swap. So it wasn't, it wasn't a super high price. Uh, Garofalo said that it was, they badly wanted the, him and, you know, you know, that's kind of actually, if you think about it, it's sort of a big haul of, you know, involving a third rounder. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and you look at kind of, you know, at the time where their backup situation was, um, you know, this guy has potentially some interesting upsides. So I'm, I'm curious as to what they, their offer was, uh, they don't have a fourth round pick. They already used that fourth round pick to go out and get, uh, Kevin Dotson. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm curious what they were, what, what package they were putting together for him. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Cause I think it would have, it would have been a nice fit, obviously, you know, I don't know. We'll get to that in a second. If we think a third rounder is worth it, like you said, basically a late round pick swap. So it's essentially a third rounder that got it for him. 
Um, and I think the fit would have been great. I mean, entering his third year, so on his rookie contract still, he's only 23 years old. So you figure you're getting a guy that's played in the league two years, you know, started pretty much all of last year, um, or I think actually started every game last year. Yeah, and then just played one game his rookie year coming in uh, there at the last game of the season. But, you know, almost 4,000 yards passing last year, a 63% completion percentage, 21 touchdowns, did have the 21 picks. Uh, so that's never good. But it was a pretty bad Washington team that was uh, squandering a lot of, you know, they obviously had the midseason trades of all their defensive players. Um, you know, injuries on offense and, and really just kind of a, an organization in disarray last season. So all things considered as a rookie, you know, you put up 4,000 yards and 21 tutties. Um, it's a decent season for a fifth round pick. So he would have came in two years left on his rookie deal. So would have been able to sap, we, you know, we all expect Stafford to kind of be in that two to three year window, most likely. So sat two years behind Stafford and potentially at 25, get the keys of the kingdom. So it wouldn't have been perfect. You'd never know, but I like the idea of a guy that's actually proven something in the NFL. So my question for you, Skinny, because you've been high on, you know, for instance, a Spencer Rattler. Like we're not talking about, you know, Bo Nix or Michael Penix, because that's going to, the Rams are going to have to use probably a second round. I don't think they'd have to use 19, even though we've talked about that. There's been speculation. They can probably get him in the second round, but looking at Seahawks giving up a third for Howell. So let's stay as that as being the market price. And the Seahawks third was a little higher, I believe, than the Rams. But would you, would you rather had given up a third for Howell or take a Spencer Rattler in the third? I I would have taken Howell, uh, absolutely. <clears throat> um, you know, th- there was times last season he was leading the league uh, in passing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there, there there's a lot of upside. And, you know, we, we've talked about it over and over, multiple positions, but quarterback especially, you know, we've seen guys come in uh, to uh, to the Rams ecosystem and kind of get, uh, you know, get their feet back underneath them. Baker Mayfield, um, you know, Carson Wentz and go out and get themselves, you know, uh, a, a good job. You know, Baker went out and got uh, a starting position and Carson Wentz ended up on the Super Bowl champions behind uh, probably the greatest quarterback of all time. So, you know, that, that you know, for Howell, you know, it, it would have worked out, you know, both ways, even if he didn't end up being like the successor to um, to Stafford, he could have been a comp pick for, for the Rams or a nice trade. If he, if he looked nice in the preseason, mm-hmm. um, you know, you look back at the game that the Rams played against uh, Washington and that's the game that actually Sam Howell was uh, benched in because he threw an interception in the fourth quarter and, and Jacoby Brissett came in and almost came back and beat the Rams. Um, but, you know, you look at, you know, the, the several backups that, um, uh, McVeigh has brought in over the years, whether that's Wolford, Perkins, uh, Baker Mayfield, kind of a backup situation than Carson Wentz. And, you know, the, it's an interesting type that it, that um, McVeigh seems to be attracted to. Yeah, it's not, but not his starting quarterback. <laughs> his yeah, starting no. has been very pocket savvy, big arm. You know, when you look at Goff and Stafford, and he didn't obviously draft Goff, but, but you know, played along or not coached golf for many years and obviously then traded for Stafford, but yeah, backups, very different, a little more mobile, a little more cocky, uh, you know, have, you know, different kind of intangibles, I guess, if you will. So yeah, I I'm kind of, I I'm with you. I think I would have preferred, you know, if you look at using 83 for a quarterback, whether it's Spencer Rattler, whether it's Michael Pratt, whoever you want to say it is, if the Rams were to do that, um, I would probably lean towards how you get obviously two extra years with that rookie. Um, under a rookie contract, the four-year contract. But again, you just, it's such a crapshoot drafting quarterbacks in the NFL that you have no idea if a third-round QB could be end up becoming Russell Wilson or end up becoming Brock Osweiler, who you know is not even in the league anymore. Like You have no idea um, until they're in the, in the system, whereas at least with Sam Howell, you have an idea. You have a year of tape of like 4,000 yards passing and 21 touchdowns. Like This guy was on a bad team and made a lot of mistakes, but played fairly well. So, you know, you kind of take the, you take the two years versus the, the experience, I guess, but still only 23. I mean, I think, let me see here. How old is like a Spencer Rattler? Let's see. I mean, he could be 24. (laughs) Rattler's 23. Rattler's 23. It's the same age. Yeah. So Rattler turns, turns 24, September 28th. 
Sam Howell turns September 16th. Yeah. So they're the same age. <laughs> <laughs> Almost to the day. Sam Howell hey, is a week older. Yeah. You, you look at, you know, some of these top games that Sam Howell put together. Uh, uh, Philadelphia loss, unfortunately, but you know, almost 400 yards passing, four touchdowns, one interception. Um, and and then against Seattle themselves, another loss though, 312 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Um, you know, so you know, there's there's proof right there that he can he can lead even against really good competition, yeah. But unfortunately, we didn't, yeah, they didn't get him, <laughs> yeah. So it's all moot, doesn't matter. He's going to the yeah. rival. You know, with, what'll be interesting, Skinny, to watch now, and then we'll wrap up this and move on to uh, some draft talk, is, you know, Geno Smith, I believe, has two years left on that three-year deal he signed up in Seattle, but I think only this year is, like, guaranteed. Next year is maybe a void year, I think. Um, so, Sam Howell could end up becoming the starter for Seattle if the Seattle Seahawks don't draft a quarterback. To, to kind of train under Gino and then the Rams unfortunately would have to face him twice a year. So it's one of those, those classic NFL storylines similar to what the Rams have to deal with, with Christian McCaffrey, you know, being in on a guy getting outbid by a division rival and then potentially having to see him two, maybe even three times a year if you count playoffs. So we'll see how it plays out, but I would have, I would have rather him been in horns than, than up with the 12th man personally. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, and I, I would like the prospects of Sam Howell a lot more than Jimmy Garoppolo too. Jimmy Garoppolo, I think is going to be a fine backup, but it's a one-year deal. It's a rental. He'll be here this year and then, you know, either sign elsewhere or whatnot. So Sam Howell could have given you an option for the future, potentially. The Rams are doomed to have to find a new, new kicker and a new backup (laughs) quarterback every single year. It seems like Mm. we're going to, we're going to roll the dice on Tanner Brown until, uh, you know, a month before the season again. Yeah. Well, I'm just waiting for someone from the UFL like we talked about is going to be on this Rams team. So there'll be a kicker from the UFL in training camp. Let's just wait and see who that is um, as that season goes on. So, all right, well, let's look. uh, Yeah. So we're going to look back a little bit today and then next week we'll look forward every single show to the, to the um, current draft and what the Rams can do. We've talked a lot about that. I think over the last couple shows Um, had Trevor Sikama on last week uh, from pro football focus. If anyone hasn't listened to that, I want to check that out. It's up on our YouTube page, Rams LAFB. You can find it on our website, lafbnetwork.com or anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, But skinny T had the great idea. Like let's look back from 2017 when McVeigh was hired at the McVeigh Sneed drafts and look at who the best picks were and the worst picks were. So um, we were going to maybe just do a list of 10, but I think we'll just go year by year. You know, it's six years. We, we won't, uh, spend crazy time on it, but maybe have some fun with it. So let's start 2017. McVay is hired, right? Youngest coach in NFL history. I believe he was what the ripe age of 30 when hired. Yeah. Still insane to me. Yeah. Insane to me. Like I'm, I'm 33 right now and I can't imagine for three years now running an NFL organization. Wild. Yeah. It's a, and it's, in his first year, takes that, what was it, a four-win Rams team and makes him 11-5 and five for first in the NFC West and makes the playoffs. So um, that was just, I think, looking back, that was one of the more incredible rookie coaching campaigns of of maybe NFL history. Like, I don't think he gets enough credit for that first season, turning that thing around. And, and you know, credit less need. They made a lot of moves in the offseason um, that year. I'm trying to think back to, um, was that Bobby Woods was added that year or the next year? I know they added... Um, that had a few different receivers. Like when you look back in time, obviously Brandon cooks was one year that was in the first year. And then also, uh, Oh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Former Clemson receiver, like third overall pick. They added one year. Oh man. It was flying over my head. <laughs> the yeah, memory why, go back up. <laughs> I'm trying to, Oh, that's going to bug me. It'll come to me when we're talking about something else. But anyway, yeah. So they, they added some pieces when you look at that, when you look at the first LA year, uh, it was pretty, the cupboards were pretty dry in terms of skill positions uh, outside of Todd Gurley. So um, they did add some nice pieces, but let's look at the 2017 draft now. So when you look at this draft class, do you have it in front of you or do you want me to read it? No, I got it. So we can share maybe it all afterwards, but who is your worst pick of this draft class? And we'll, we'll make it you know interesting. We don't have to always just do the seventh round that doesn't make the team. It'll just be like, you know, what was the value and whatnot? So who in your eyes was the worst pick? I'm going to go with Gerald Everett. 
second second Ooh, round pick, okay. number forty four. Um, you know, you know, obviously he's not the just the worst guy that's on this draft, but given the fact that they used their very first pick uh, for him, and I don't believe he survived his uh, rookie contract. Uh, you know, that they had uh, Tyler Higby already on on the roster, um, who kind of, you know, uh, I think Gerald Everett got more starting reps than than Higby there for a little while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, this is this is a guy obvious that they wanted to, um, you know, have, uh, you know, be their starting tight end, um, pass catching tight end for sure. Not the blocker that uh, Higby has become, but that just never really panned out. And we've never seen them kind of get that that guy uh, at tight end. Um, so that, that that's my pick. Yeah, I mean that's an interesting one. And quickly before I uh, forget, it was Sammy Watkins was the receiver. Oh and, yeah, and yes, he was added in the 2017 season. So um, he was the addition of the off season to help McVeigh and and Goff. So um, fourth overall pick, not third uh, in his draft class by Buffalo. I I, I think I'm going to echo you on this one because. You know, you look at this draft class, and obviously, we'll we'll get to our best pick, which is pretty obvious. If those don't remember, you'll you'll remember very quickly. Um, but you know, some some decent picks here, and then you know, the later rounds, you're kind of swinging and, and hoping anyway. But yeah, you're, it's your first pick. You don't have a first rounder because you took Jared Goff the year before. And I think the the unfortunate thing about the the Everett pick is a when it was when it was selected, it was kind of like, huh? Like it was like like really good athlete. I think he went to what South Alabama, like a small school in the South. Yeah. South Alabama. And so it was kind of like seen as this bit of a reach anyway, for their first pick in the draft, the Rams just, you know, I don't think historically when I'm thinking back, we'll see more obviously as we go through the show, but I feel like they haven't done super great in the second round. Um, (laughs) But it started with this. And the, the thing that I struggle with the Everett pick is I remember watching him in training camp that year and saying, man, this guy is an athletic freak. Like some of the stuff he could do, uh, his speed, his size, his catch radius. Uh, you look at him like going over the middle in training camp. And I was like, this guy is going to be a force was going to be really good in this offense. Um, based on what we knew that Sean McVay was going to kind of envision being this similar Shanahan kind of protege. Um, and you see what tight ends have done and, and not just Kyle Shanahan, but Mike Shanahan offenses. When you think of, you know, Shannon Sharp and guys like that. So like Gerald Everett could be that guy. And so whether it was his fault or whether it was having Higby already there or whether it was just usage, it just never became. And I think it was probably more on him considering now he's played with Seattle and the chargers and has never had the success that I think he could potentially have. So it wasn't a bust pick, I would say, but definitely for your first pick in the draft as a tandem to not make it through the rookie contract and really not have much of an impact would probably be the worst pick. So I'm going to echo you on that. Yeah, you know, you look at the rest of this draft and and obviously there's one there's one fantastic outlier that is the, the clear and obvious favorite uh best in this one, but there's yeah. no there's no guys that are just complete uh busts. You you get down to the 6th and 7th round, you know, Tenzel Smart, Sam Rogers, Ejon Price, like you know, you can't call them busts cuz they're 6th and 7th rounders, yeah. but you know, Sam, Samson Ebicom, you know, you know, did better once he left, but I thought he, you know, he was fine. You know, fourth round pick, he was fine. You know, yeah. Josh, Josh Reynolds did a great job. I mean, you know, a good three, number three, number four option. And John Johnson was a, was a starter from the third yeah. round. So overall, this is a, this is a good draft year. And then you got Cooper cup, Yeah, you know, and we don't, I, you know, we, we don't have to sell anybody on this one. You know, this is what solidified the Rams as kind of like this, Oh, what are these guys doing? You know, with this draft, they found this you know guy from Eastern Washington, and 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 now he's now he's you know one of the greatest receivers in the league. Period. Yeah, yeah, and it was at the time I remember just being like, you know, obviously the production Cooper Cup had at Eastern Washington. I mean, it was it broke pretty much every record if I remember correctly um, for that level of play. But it's like, man, they go first pick South Alabama, second pick Eastern Washington. So it's it's kind of not odd, but like it's like okay, there's this new young coach. And he's already kind of like pushing the envelope on like drafting kind of like really unknown guys. And Cup wasn't unknown just because of the production. But, you know, small town, small school receiver, you never knew how that's truly going to translate over. But home run, obviously, triple crown winner, Super Bowl MVP, 
uh, Cooper Cup and uh, a huge fan favorite. So that's that may be the best pick of the entire McVay Sneed draft so far, but uh, they kicked it off with a bang with that one. For sure. All right, 2018. Let's let's snake it. So let's start with best pick first and okay. with worst picks. When you look at this 2018 draft class, they had a total of what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven draft picks. No first, as always. Uh, no second either this year. So they start in the third round. But I'll kick it over to you. Their worst or best pick, excuse me. I'm going to go with Sebastian Joseph Day in the sixth round, 195th pick overall. Um, you know, again, you know, like like Samson Ebucom, like I think he just did a really good job while he was here. He improved, you know, um, became, you know, one of those early success stories for the defensive line playing alongside Aaron Donald. Uh, but from, from a guy from the sixth round um, who's – Actually, I'm not sure if he's still a free agent right now, but you know, found himself a home in, in at the Chargers for a while, and then with the the 49ers for a part of the season. So, you know, s- still kicking around in the league from a from a day three late day three pick. Yeah, absolutely. He's on the the Titans now, so signed uh, oh. over there. And um, yeah, I, I would I'll, I'll be different, but I would I'll just say I echo this is their best pick when you look at just production. He was able to have, and and really the reason I think why he didn't remain with the team is then that's when they, which we'll get to later, but they ended up having great gains kind of come up and then they just got outpriced and Sebastian Jose was able to make a little bit more money going down uh, across the freeway to the chargers. So um, that's their best pick, I think, but to be a little different, I'll go and this is probably uh, debatable. Many would say, but I'll go, I'll say Brian Allen and not because he was a, has been a tremendous player, obviously no longer a Ram but for a fourth round pick was able to start for this team at center, whether you liked it or not. He, he was a a decent starter during his time, obviously had some injury history, but you're not using, it's not like you used a first round pick on a center and got this kind of production. You you used a fourth rounder on him, And so you got fourth round production. If we're being honest, like every now and then you find a fourth, fifth, sixth round offensive lineman that becomes a stalwart. Um, That does happen. It's not, it's not like it never happens, but typically at least right off the gate, when you get your your stalwart left tackles, your franchise centers, you're using a first round pick on them. So you know they got decent production. So I still think Seabass, but I'll go with Brian Allen because he did become a viable starter for this team over his tenure. Yeah, starter on the Super Bowl champion. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And earned yeah. a second earned a second contract, and you know now now they're <laughs> paying for that. But yeah, which is you know. uh, yeah, exactly. So you don't, right, they don't see a lot of second contracts. I, was just I think there's, yeah. I, I think there's a clear and obvious uh, worst one here, yeah. <laughs> as well. I think we're going to grab that. Obvious, uh, Joseph Noteboom. Um, yeah. God love him. Uh, you know, they tried and tried and tried and paid him. You know, for for his trying and, you know, you know, heading heading into that first season without Andrew Whitworth. Um, you know, I, I I was trying to keep an open open mind about it, but you know, like I kept thinking they're taking a like a big chance on a guy that's played limited reps. And they paid him uh, as a big chance as well. You know, he was a $20 million cap hit until they restructured his contract. And he's still one of the highest paid uh, Rams. Yeah. You know, he's taking up $10 million worth of cap space right now. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's the it's the hurt that keeps on hurting. Yeah. <laughs> it's insult and injury. I mean, Note Boom is your classic uh, backup quarterback that plays a few good games and then a team decides to shell out and make him their starter. He's the the Matt Flynn, the Nick Foles, the, the, that type of quarterback that, you know, showed some stuff and all of a sudden a franchise is like, yeah, we're gonna give him a shot. He played sparingly uh, over the course of his, you know, rookie contract uh, and, and had some good starts and, and started some for Whitworth and started some inside. And, and so then when Whitworth retires, they thought, all right, we see, we saw a few good starts out of this guy. Let's make him the franchise left tackle moving forward and hasn't worked out. So we'll just, uh, Leave it at that. Yeah, probably their worst pick uh, of this draft. Jonathan Franklin Myers is an interesting one because didn't have a great tenure as a Ram, but has now gone on and do done really well, good things uh, since moving on from the Rams. So, is um, he a Jet now? Is he on that uh, yeah. Jet defense? Yeah, he's been good ever since going yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's about it. Micah Kaiser played some good games, I think, um, but nothing, sure. nothing crazy. So, twenty nineteen. I'll go this ahead is an and start class. This is a really very interesting, interesting class. class. Very yeah. interesting class. Um, 
worst pick. So we'll start with that. And I will go, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I don't think there's many, well, I don't know. I don't want to tell the whole class. I'll just say worst pick was Bobby Evans. I mean, you, you use a third rounder on him. Never could get a, he was never even really a thought as an actual viable starter. I remember being at training camp when he was drafted and, you know, playing with that second unit and you could already tell him this is training camp. We're not even going full speed. And you're like, this guy could be a liability yeah. if, if they need to look to him. And, and it was a third rounder out of Oklahoma. So, um, you know, higher than the next guy, maybe we'll talk about higher than Brian Allen, who they got in the fourth, higher than um, the same round as, you know, Joe Nopum. So, um, yeah, Bobby Evans, I think, was a guy that after being drafted was like, okay, they got the pedigree from Oklahoma, use a third rounder on him, and just never could could become what uh, was hoped for after being drafted. Yeah, I'm having a hard time because I think there's, you know, there's some candidates. You know, you got Taylor Rapp and 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 Daryl Henderson right at the top there. And yeah, I'm I always like Taylor Rapp more than the the rest of, you know, as as a second round pick, I think he probably should have done better. Um. But you know he he did a good job. He he brought some physicality to the to the defense. He just never kind of like put put all the pieces together. Um, and Daryl Daryl Henderson came in with such high upside, and especially mm-hmm. where they were with running back at the time, where it was like the end of the Gurley era, and just in a tough spot. And you want I wanted him I wanted him to be something that he just never turned out to be. You know, yeah. he kind of came in with like something insane. Like, didn't he have like nine, eight or nine yards per carry in the senior yeah. season at Memphis? Yeah, I think it was like it was 9.6 like, or something wild. Yeah. Could never stay healthy. So I have a hard time just, you know, taking, taking a swipe at him. And, you know, big plays in the Super Bowl, too. One or two big catches, oddly enough. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, th- I think I'm going to go in a similar vein. I'm going to say David Long, you know, a third rounder just never just never really found any starting reps and and they i think they they really needed needed that kind of work from him and that just never materialized so unfortunately i'm I'll, i'm going to throw him under the bus yeah no i think that's that's a fair one too he just never really became a viable player or viable starter or whatnot um so okay best player of this class um i think there's probably two maybe three that you could debate um, but I'm going to go with Nick Scott, uh, who was their second to last pick seventh rounder. Um, and I think when you look at what they were able to get out of him for seventh rounder really didn't play much safety until his final season with the Rams in that Super Bowl run. And everyone knows how important he was to that Super Bowl run and, and the big hit on the Niners and whatnot. And that goes down in lore, but he was a huge part of special teams, his entire tenure with the Rams. So tons of production from him from the special team side. And then when it mattered most at the end of his contract actually played on the defense as a starter um, and then played really well. So for me, I'll go Nick Scott. Yeah. I love that pick, especially in the seventh round. Got to shout out Greg Gaines though. Uh, yeah. Another big guy. And just in the super bowl run, what he did that season, the fact that he just climbed the ladder steadily, um, you know, each year from 19 up to 21, um, you know, Either one of those guys, I, you know, Nick Scott is a seventh rounder though, that, that did the same thing, worked himself into a, a starting role and, uh, you know, the hard way, you know, special teams and, you know, playing physical. So yeah, yeah. N- either one, but yeah, this is, this is kind of like the meaty draft that everybody wants the Rams to have where it's like, you know, look at all those, those starters from fourth, fifth and seventh yeah. round, you know, beautiful yeah, thing. D- David Edwards, shout out in the fifth, who was a starter in the offensive line. So um, almost all of their picks in this in this draft class like saw meaningful minutes, whether they were good minutes or not. <laughs> they were meaningful and then yeah. they were on the field. So, um, all right, moving on to 2020, the COVID draft a year after the Rams, I believe, uh, just missed the playoffs in 2019 and another draft. I wouldn't say great. We have talked about it before now. Uh, officially, no one from this draft class got a second contract. I'll let you start, though. Give me your best pick of this class, if, if there is one. Jordan Fuller. I mean, that's that's the only way you can go on this one. You know, like maybe Van Jefferson could be in that conversation because he had a couple of, you know, I'll say he had one good, good, one good year. 
Yeah. Um, but got got cut part way through the season. Uh, you know, so that that goes to show you. So, you know, always a big fan of, of Jordan Fuller. Took over for John Johnson. Um, uh, you know, another six round guy. So, uh, just a surprising, you know, uh, uh, you know, starter. Yeah. For four yeah. years. Jordan Fuller's the answer. Um, I was really surprised they didn't, especially when you saw what Carolina paid him. I was surprised they didn't want him. Um, not didn't want him, but weren't willing to pay that. And, you know, instead go the Cam Curl route. Um, so I just think Jordan Fuller obviously meant a lot to this team, especially in the Super Bowl run and what he was able to do as a sixth round pick. So uh, this was a great pick. You know, it's unfortunate he didn't get a second contract, but it wasn't because he was a bad player. Um, for whatever reason, the Rams just went, you know, new D coordinator, went a little different direction and didn't want to pay um, that much for him. So yeah, Jordan Fuller's really the only answer. So who's your, yeah. who's your I, worst? Uh, you got, you got some options here. Yeah. <laughs> well, and just to put cap on Fuller, I think that a reason they went away from him is I think there is like a big change in defensive philosophy to mm -hmm. a much more physical uh, safety position. Whereas Jordan Fuller was much more of like a, he was, he wore the green dot, you know, he was kind of the communicator and the, and, and the, the field general out there. Worst player. I, I'm going to go with Terrell Lewis um, just because uh, third rounder, a position that they needed desperately at that time uh, for him to step up. I, I actually wrote an article about him way back, uh, you know, thinking that he was going to be the kind of the the, the splash uh, pick from from the 2020 draft and just never, you know, whether it was health or, you know, just no no playing time whatsoever on this team that was edge Ed, edge needy they like if you can't like get playing reps on on that squad a, a squad that needs you so badly it's just not happening you know so yeah that's mine yeah he would be mine too um for everything you said and and the fact they knew it was a risk because of the injury but obviously they saw the upside and just the the athleticism um but whether it was health or just what well, you alluded to, he just couldn't see the field, whether he couldn't stay healthy or even when he was healthy, he just couldn't have any production. So um, just to be different, I'll throw out um, Terrell Burgess. It, this was a weird one to me because I thought he had so much talent, um, such a great kid coming out of Utah, uh, SoCal kid before that. Um, but just, yeah, for whatever reason, couldn't, you know, early on got some reps and then got a little banged up and then could never see the field again. And especially once Staley left and then Raheem Morris comes in, um, really never saw the field. So, yeah, for whatever reason, Terrell Burgess, and I don't even know, is he in the league anymore? I know that he obviously left the Rams not just this year, but more, I don't even know if he's in the league now. Yeah, it's a coin toss right there. I'm surprised Staley didn't bring him on. He is on the Washington Commanders. Okay. I so, believe. Or he was last year, at least. So uh, yeah, He, he, know, was, he was a free agent because we had, we had that whole conversation of him coming back. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's a free agent still right now. He was on the commanders last year. So, um, yeah. So anyway, that was a bummer one because it, I just really have no idea if it was fit, if it was coaching preference or he really just didn't pan out to being a third round pick. So yeah, he got some playing time in his rookie season and then was injured and he played well and then he was yeah. injured and they just never could, they could never get it back. Where do you think Cam Akers falls in the, like, if you were to rank, you know, you know, worst to first, I mean, of this class or just in general of this class, he would be, if we said Burgess and Lewis, he would be third. I think right after that, I okay. think what made him a bad pick is that it was a second rounder. Um, you know, I think yeah. they obviously had some injuries, but if he would have been like a, a fourth round running back, like, okay, you got some, some decent carries out of him. He had a couple good games. Um, certainly obviously, ended poorly and the, and the season before last there was the rumors of them trying to trade him and him like quitting on the team and all this stuff so um yeah maybe it should be higher though i mean he was a second round pick and really didn't do really didn't amount to much i mean between him and henderson they really it's amazing they won a super bowl with those as they're like running backs yeah yeah right well and they didn't run the ball and they didn't run the ball though. yeah <laughs> Yeah, and uh, just to point out on Terrell Lewis, Terrell Lewis is the first kind of edge rusher that they tried doing this, like, you know, s slim, l lengthy, super athletic with, um, you know, like any kind of red flags. And we'll, we'll, we'll touch on it in the later drafts, but this is the first one where they, like, tried. They took a big swing and missed. And that's the, the first one. So yeah. 20, 2021. 
yeah, another, for being totally honest, not a great draft. Some good pieces, but when you look at the a clear number game, one, I think. Wait, what? A clear number one. A clear yeah. like yeah. I'll let you start. Let's just go with that. Who, okay. Worst worst of this draft. Oh, worst. Oh, okay. Oh no. Oh no. We got to snake it. You're right. No, yeah, yeah, we did worse last. So yes, snake it to worst of this draft. Okay. All right. Well, golly. <laughs> <laughs> Do I throw Tutu Atwell under the bus finally? Because I've been uh, trying. I've been. I've been rooting yeah, for him. Yeah. I'm just gonna do yeah, it. Yeah. I'm turn. I'm just gonna be a complete turncoat on this guy. It. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, I think you. I mean, so far in his career, 57 catches, 781 yards, and four touchdowns. Um over the entire course of his career for a second round pick, especially over the guys who were there. I don't even want to bring up the Creed Humphrey, but if you look at even just other other receivers that were there, I mean, you would hope that would be a single season stat line, 57, 781 and four, not a four year career stat line or a three year career stat line thus far going into his fourth year. So yeah, I think, I think Tutu is the clear of worse and, you know, still has a year to maybe prove everyone wrong. It looked like, Skinny, we talked about it looked like last year he was making that transition. Like the beginning of the season, it's like, all right, he's getting used more. This is great. And then just kind of fell off and we didn't hear about him again for the final seven weeks. Yeah, totally displaced by Demarcus Robinson, who just came in and and did a solid job. And yeah, unfortunately, you know, a guy that's my size does not play wide receiver in in this league. We're the we're the same size. Yeah, uh, 5'8", 158 pounds, or 150 pounds. He's listed at 160 sometimes. You know, he actually made uh, um, uh, uh, Bruce Feldman's freak list and totally list him at the, listed him, I think, like 175, 185, which if he was if he was sub 4'4 speed at that size, I would be like, oh, interesting, okay. Yeah. Like, you know, but he's like, you know, nah. he's 150 pounds. You just don't see it, and and there's a reason. Yeah, exactly. So... Um, and I think there's a clear best pick here. Unless you kick it off, I think we're on the same one. Ernest Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty I mean, obvious. Yeah. I mean, he started. now with with Donald retired, he's now the staple of the defense. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, taking the green dot, uh, you know, improved year over year. Uh, you know, started off it with a, a pretty high floor and he's and he's moved moved up from there. So loved everything that I've seen from him. Um, and then I mean, I think number two best, you got to look at Ben Skoranek. Then that's a big drop off. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And everybody else is behind him. Nobody else in this draft is. I mean, we'll see what happens with Bobby Brown this year. Yeah. I guess Bobby Brown's the guy that can can prove the most for sure. And there was a lot of hype about him, you know, coming out of Texas A&M and um, a lot of hope and, you know, some some health and stuff like that hasn't been able to come to fruition. But, you know, no Donald now. I mean, he's going to be. He's going to be the guy in the middle um, beside Kobe Turner, uh, depending on how this draft goes coming up. So big expectations for Bobby Brown. Hopefully he can, hopefully he can make that gap closer. And we can next year be saying, man, Ernest Jones, Bobby Brown. Those are, those are two both pretty damn good picks. So yeah. we shall see though. Yeah. Chris, Chris Garrett, the, the, the next uh, whiff, you can't really call it a whiff because he's a seventh, seventh rounder from what was it? St. Paul can, Concordia St. Paul in Minnesota, a tiny little school where they they tried to you know get a super athletic you know slim long guy, never worked out for the edge. Yeah, he was a, yeah, and it was unfortunate too because it felt like uh, there was talent there. It just didn't get unlocked really, whether it was a fit or whether it was just you know coming from a small school just couldn't translate over. But it felt like there could have been something there, and it just uh, just never came to fruition. So, um, yeah, all right, twenty. 20- two class still still pretty new so you know only have played two seasons now um what are we doing best first snake so yeah when you look at this class again probably pretty obvious but i'll let you take it off as the the best yeah kyron williams yeah Yeah. fifth rounder no no first round in this draft class no second round in this draft class so they start in the third yet again Yeah. So, and they traded up to get Kyron Williams. Yeah. So, and you know, had we talked about this last year, it would have been a definite, definite question mark. Um, But this year you just proved that uh, he he can do it, you know, and there, there was, there was a point in the season where he had gotten injured and you know, the, the, the offense was completely anemic and you know, you and I were talking, you know, like 
you know, is this team a Kyron Williams away from being super dynamic? And I, I was super skeptical of him coming back in and unlocking it, mm-hmm. but that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what happened. Exactly. Um, it was, it was clear how important and how much Sean McVay sees him in this vision for the offense. So um, that was the best pick just to throw another one out there. I'll, I'll put Ye- Russ East out there. I mean, seventh rounder that ended up starting games for this team. So Anytime, similar to like Nick Scott, anytime you get a seventh rounder that can be a special teams player, but also actually start for an offense or defensive unit, um, you you hit pretty good on that that seventh round pick. So shout out Russ East. Worst pick. Yeah. Go for it, my friend. Uh, Logan Bruss. Yep. You know, just never saw the field. Again, they take a swing uh, uh, with their with their first pick. He's a third rounder, which you expect to get some starting uh, reps out of a well he's not a top 100 he's a 104 so yeah but that's what you get for trading away all your earlier on picks unfortunately yeah and then ended up getting waived just in his seconds after his after his rookie year gets waived obviously he ended up out in the practice squad but you never want to see your first overall selection getting waived after your uh, one season so and obviously some of that was for cap and, and space go ahead yeah, and, and you look at what they've done with this offseason with their offensive line. He's not gonna he's not gonna sniff a starting rep at all. I mean, with Jonah Jackson, yep. Steve Avila, Avila, and uh, uh, Kevin Dotson in the middle, and you know Rob Havenstein. Uh, you know this he's a, Logan Bruss is a guard in the NFL. He's not a tackle. So yeah, exactly. So and so we'll see what they do with that if he just remains kind of practice squad and develop and and go from there. So all right. It's going to be too soon. It's only been one season, but we can quickly just bring up the 23 class. Um, You know, I think it's unfair at this point to say worst pick almost because it's only been a year and some of these guys, you know, maybe just didn't even get reps. Um, So, but I think it's pretty obvious best pick. I mean, I don't even know if it is that obvious when you look at there's three players here. I think it's got to be Puka Nakua. I mean, the dude should have won offensive rookie of the year. He broke every rookie receiving record, fifth rounder. Cooper Cup missed four games, wasn't himself most of the year, and Puka led this offense. So I think it's it it is him. But man, you can still make the case for Avil, um, Avila and um, uh, Kobe Turner. So I mean, this was a yeah. looking at all again. It's been one year, but looking at all these draft classes in the McVay Snead era, this is clearly so far, far and away the best draft class. Yeah, absolutely. And you know you got. Four guys at the top. You got Puka Nakua that could have that could have been should have been rookie of the year. Uh, Kobe Turner should have been defensive uh, uh, rookie of the year uh, as a third rounder. You know, yeah. nine nine sacks. Uh, Byron Young, great year. Um, yeah. You know, it's all going to be changed now. All that calculus changes because Aaron Donald's being plucked out of that defense. Yeah. Um, but you know, and then Steve Avila. It's like you, you got to love it. You know, like this. Those four alone make it worth it. But then you got Davis Allen who ca- came in. I was say uh, that. Tyler Higby was injured. Um, so you know, and then Ethan, Ethan Evans. Uh, I was, yeah, you know, gonna shout him out. Quality punter, you know, in the seventh round. Um, you know, a lot of these other guys. I, you know, like like you're saying, I'm reticent to to pick a a bust at this point, just because, you know. I mean, if if you had to pick one, Stetson Bennett, but that's like, you know, we're treading on territory that's just mean if we're going to yeah. pick him as a bust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm yeah. not going to be mean to this kid. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Although I, Stetson Bennett is, uh, what, going to be three years older than uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sam Howell is going to be. Just, just throw it out there. <laughs> indeed. Yeah, indeed. Wild. So, but yeah. Definitely a great draft class. Yeah, we no bust we can even say yet uh, until you get to kind of year three is when you can t- start making some some true analysis kind of of a draft class, I think. But certainly looks like the best class thus far. So let us know what you guys think in the comments below if you're on YouTube or you can hit us up on LAFBnetwork.com or on Twitter at RL Anderson LAFB, at Ryan Dyer at LAFB, or the main handle at LAFB Network. Thank you all for hanging out with us for another episode of the Rams skinny here on the LA football network. We'll be back next week with a live mock draft, all seven rounds to see what these Rams do, because the picks we make are exactly what Les Snead and Sean McVay are going to do. We guarantee it. So we'll see you all next week for skinny T go ahead. 
I th- I think we should do like a uh just put ourselves in the mindset like I'll I'll be uh, I'll be less need and you can be Sean McVay since we're we're closer to their ages. <laughs> okay, I like that. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna well, dress. I'm gonna well, dress like McVay. All right. <laughs> you gotta dress like Sneed. So you you basically need to dress down more than you usually do, and I need to dress up more yeah. than I usually do. Essentially. Perfect. I love All it. Right. I love this there idea. We there we go. Well, we'll be back Monday dropping a live mock draft with your boys Skinny Sneed and Ryan McVay. <laughs> Thank you all for hanging out with us. Have a great weekend. Talk to you all in a couple days.